Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby together with Guinness. Good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Flatiron Square. Yay! Look at all you beautiful people. Welcome to our latest live House of Rugby. It's very nice to see you all here this evening. Would you please give an enormously warm welcome to Lord Snore himself, Mr. Mike Tyndall, and everyone's favourite plant-based celebrity, Mr. James Haskell. Yes, Come on, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Why have you got the street there? Oh, Welcome. I don't know, because I'm, I'm in East London, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's how we roll out here. Stick to your roots, mate. How yeah. are you? I'm all right, actually. Can you tell everyone how you've arrived here today, please? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm kind of quite famous now, so... Um, <laughs> Still I, I, I in to, his own mind. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to upgrade my car, because uh, not a lot of leg room. So I said, can they send one of those like Mercedes vans? Well, it doesn't have to be Mercedes, other vans are available. Um, but they sent me, essentially sent me a school minibus with even less room <laughs> than a normal car. You, and were, you were thinking blacked out, yeah, black, yeah. nice. Like, uh, you know, captain's chairs that face each other. Yeah. If anything, I was going to have too much leg room. Um, and I got in and the bloke pulled the van. I still had the special logo on the side, it was a bit weird. The ramp came down and he said, how many, how many people? I said, it's just me. I said, now how many people? It's just me. And he's like looking at me thinking I'm a complete tit, and I was thinking, mate, come on, got in there, I'm like that. <laughs> School, someone's lunchbox in there, honestly. The Capri Sun and a, and a, and a baby bell. So um, you're back so to the day where you used to nip the big roll up. Yeah. Off people. Yeah, so that was Brilliant not, not ideal, seat. so I've called my agent, they're speaking to Joe, and, and hopefully we'll be back to business as usual in an S class, because I can't be doing the fun bus on the way home. <laughs> it's a great shame. Um, how are still you? accept the train. No. Right by into my... Unless it's the Orange Express, Tins you a man of people. <laughs> um, how are you? What's the news this week? Anything uh, interesting? Not, not much, actually. No? I was up north at the weekend, which was nice. You would do what? what? Up north. Oh, up north. Yeah. <laughs> I get giddy outside the M25. Yeah. So, yeah, get a nosebleed, don't you, when you go out there? Yeah, exactly. Doing what? Uh, I was actually just seeing my family. Very nice. Which is lovely to get home. Good. Um, well, your family or the, the family? No, my family. Ah, <laughs> oh, right. They also the get first. those bleed outs. <laughs> Unless it's yeah. Scotland. Right, fine. Um, you weren't with us last week. What were you doing? What was I doing last week? It says here you're at the National oh, Television Awards. God, I told you I was getting Guys, well known, wasn't I? Selfie. Yeah. Oh, Look how hot my wife is. Funny, me and Kate. We spoke on Wednesday and you said, Ricky Gervais looked at me. Oh and I was my like, God! Fucking hell! No, honestly, honestly, no, no word of a lie. So the NTA is. Is that because your face is here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in his dressing room. <laughs> I was installing a camera in his toilet. <laughs> Um, no, so I obviously got invited to the NTA. Interesting, eye-opening experience. Not something uh, I was used to. I probably wasn't. Not sure I'll go back. Was that the one David Williams did? Yeah. He got battered. He for did that. get battered, but everyone gets battered. In, in 2020, everyone's default position is I'm offended. Changed my mind. Like the, the you know the happy bus comment I brought. This is going to probably get upset people. Don't give a shit. So I was at the NTAs. It was great. Obviously got to see see Caitlin, who I thought was looking mega. Uh, saw everyone uh, there. And as I was sitting in my chair, Ricky Gervais walked in. Now, there is a small chance it wasn't at me, <laughs> but I looked at him and he went, nodded, gave me a little salute and smiled. It was the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> now, I did look round and see and he was nobody else around me, so I think maybe he was doing it at me what, and that made the what, whole evening worthwhile. What you've got to think of from your point of view, that is like you walking into the room and someone going, banter, 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 and he's like, and you're like, fuck, how do I not talk <laughs> Yeah, yeah, time? yeah. But I didn't that do anything. I grade. didn't do anything. I was more like this. <laughs> and that's so why that I walked on. Yeah, yeah. No, but he, he did nod and smile, so I just wonder. Did he go, mm -mm. Yeah, was it nod and smile, go look at him, he's special. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Could you, be. Do you know Ricky Gervais? It's the kind of person you've got on your phone. No, I do not have him on the phone. Oh. I, I drove, I, I drove past him once in Hampstead, he was on the phone, and I, I, I tried to get Chloe to stop, stop the car, stop the car, to get out, but she's like, you can't disturb someone on the phone. Right. So I still haven't met him physically, but like, he... Drive closer, like, drive closer, <laughs> airdrop details, airdrop details. <laughs> exactly. Ricky, Coming Ricky. on in off the long run. Um, so that was obviously uh, Tuesday last week. Monday was the big one. Yeah, that was the big one. That was the National Takeaway Awards. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> My what, phone's blowing what, up. What were you doing at that? The National Takeaway Awards, sponsored by Just Eat. Oh, my God. Oh, me and Roman Kemp, we're such good friends. Um, no, we were sitting... Yeah, I did good. see you getting dragged along on his coattails. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Clinging. people say you turn up to the opening of an envelope. I said, I will, if you're paying me. Right. <laughs> and they were paying, so I turned up. And actually you got paid really to go to the Takeaway Awards. 
Alex, of all the years we've worked together, do you think <laughs> I would turn up to the, the Takeaway Awards without getting paid? Uh, it depends. It do depends on the profile. Followers, yeah. 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 It depends whether you're social. I've got no followers. <laughs> my bank balance looked a bit healthier. No, I went there because I was a big supporter. I enjoy using Just Eat. Other apps are available. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> if they're paying. Um, <laughs> but at the moment, it's just Just Eat, so forget that. Uh, Deliver Who? What? <laughs> Very um, good. <laughs> So, yeah, no, that was actually interesting. I mean, the dance routine at the start was, was a bit insane. The what? The, they, did, they got some dancers in tracksuits singing their own Just Eats takeaway song. I put it on my Instagram, and it was, it was, people were blown away by it. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Yeah. But in general, the awards are very good. And I didn't know there were so many. I've got actually a list of takeaways now to, to smash in central London. OK. Um, interesting with... <laughs> Right. Middle of, around one of the Guinness Six Nations, and we're talking about your delivery takeaway. <laughs> you asked the questions. This is how it works. I did. Sai made me. Um, <laughs> speaking of things that you do for money, last time we did a live show here, we got into the fact that you record video messages for, at, at 80 quid a pop. Yeah. How's sure. that going these days? Yeah. How's, how's it going? One for you. Absolutely. Well, no problem. Yeah. Where's it available, you cheeky devil? It's actually cameo.com. Is there a different version? Yes, celeb voicemail. I'm on both platforms. And, what was that? Will I reply to fan mail? Yes, I will. If you visit fanbound.com, I will reply. <laughs> There's three options there for you, but thanks all for asking. Are you, are you, sometimes I give money to charity. Sometimes. Are you, is your currency gone up on these things? Are you now charging more than £80 yeah, a pop? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to mention how much £82.50. No, no, I, I went up a bit. I've actually taken it down. Do they cause... set the price or do you set your price? I set the price. Come on. I wake up in the morning, look at the mirror and go, fuck me, 120 quid today for a personal message. <laughs> Some days I'm like, ooh, 20 pounds. <laughs> That's never happened. <laughs> Will you do a freebie tonight? Will I do a freebie? Yeah. Can I claim it back in some sort of tax? <laughs> well, you'll have, to, you'll have to ask them. Is there someone here tonight called Bethan O'Sullivan? Yes, yes, oh. Bethan, will you come up to the front, please? Will you all welcome Bethan O'Sullivan? Come on up. Is it your birthday? Is it Bethan's birthday? Happy birthday to you. Come on, Bethan. Come on, we got your present. Happy birthday Come and stand here. James is going to do your message. Happy birthday, dear Bethan. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. And a round of applause for Bethan. Could you, James, just look down this camera and give Bethan a message that she can then take away with her? Yeah, just so I can, that, I it's can. like advertising, so I can, that people can I, see what you do. I, I don't want to be awkward, but who, who do I speak to about payment? I, uh, no, this is a freebie. It's like an advertising. It's speculate it? to accumulate. It's to give it back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, Bethan. I'm James Haskell. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky devil. <laughs> Call me, yeah. if you can work out the number. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bethan, happy birthday. Well done, you. <clears throat> well done. Very it nice. It is true. When you do something for free, it does feel, feel good. good. It yeah. does, doesn't it? Ugh. What's really nice about that is that also gives, uh, gives us an appropriate moment to plug our merchandise, which Bethan's just walked off with. That was the All Aboard the Hask Train t-shirt. We've got a new one coming up. Did you see Chloe wearing... I did. Unbelievable, isn't it? Has she got the full lingerie set with... No, so... Never, mi <laughs> never microwave more. That's so coming in the next round. I don't know if any of you follow me on, on Instagram. Should do, probably. Um, but um, I, I got one of those... I bought myself one of those virtual reality things. You know, the Oculus bits kit. And uh, I, sh I let my wife have a go on it. And the first thing she, she said, and she was actually wearing a You Should Never Microwave More Marinier t-shirt with Alex Payne's face on, which is a bit weird. I wanted to know... She's always sleeping in it. I want, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just love the idea of you waking up in the middle of the night and there I am, yeah. right in front of you. Yeah, right, honestly. Yeah. She's never got more action wearing that t-shirt. <laughs> Don't tell people that. Well, I was just thinking of you, wasn't I? Um, I was like, speaking in a really posh voice and become really distant and inaccessible, <laughs> yeah. really. <laughs> Wear um, red trousers and mug me off. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, and so she, was wearing, she put the Oculus on, and the first thing she said was, <laughs> and I was sitting there laughing, filming, she went, you're not allowed to watch porn wearing this, <laughs> right? And I was like sniggering, she went, do you hear me? And she's looking round the room. So, I mean, what's the point? That's what I bought it for. So I'm just taking it back. Have you been into like a sort of 3D virtual reality Oh, it's porn? unbelievable. Oh, no, porn? <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. I should know. Uh, no, um, listen to the question. <laughs> yeah, I have actually. Answer. Yeah, I was shooting zombies this afternoon. It's been a very busy afternoon. Um, but it's, it's amazing. Always working is what you say. Always working. Those zombies aren't going to kill themselves, are they? Yeah. Um, uh, um, uh, Sire's just saying, please, please, please move along. Uh, not for the first time. The C 
evening. Shop.joe.co.uk if any of you would like a T-shirt. <laughs> there is a new design coming this week. Would you like to sell it? Have you seen it? I haven't. Uh, well... It's in, oh, it's on the WhatsApp group. It's yeah. basically a horse with your head on it. So Stallion, baby. So a horse. And it says, Zoe puts up with this. It's, it's actually very good. And your response was? Uh, she does, because I'm a stallion. Yeah, she's dealing with a stallion, so it looks pretty accurate. At which point we all left the group. <laughs> um, <coughs> do, it's actually, yes, very good. Lots more merch coming. Um, and, yeah, mm. so that'll be good. Buy, buy a T-shirt, why not? You're really good salesman, aren't you? I am, yeah. yeah. We had Jess Breach on last week, who gave a serious... You're actually going to get on quite well with her when she comes back. She's another gobshite and was extremely rude about my inability to read my lines correctly. Oh. So, yeah, welcome to her. Um, she on didn't that score, note, though, did she? What? She didn't score. We all predicted 10 plus. Yeah, she didn't she score. She untouchable once. They did win, though, so that was a start. Um, right, before we lose everybody and they all go home, because actually this is sort of slightly unravelling, could we please welcome in someone who is extremely good looking for a rugby player, has achieved a huge amount in the game and brings a lot of rugby sense. Ladies and gentlemen, this is great. Johnny Beatty, come on in, ahead of the Calcutta Cup. Good evening, one Brown. He's even come with a notebook. You're gonna sit on the inside there, you tuck in there. I love a man who comes with a notebook because it looks like you're prepared. Well, there's two, there's two of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there are two, two of us. notebooks, there's, which there's is very good. Here. Um, how are you? Cheers. Very well, yourself? It's very nice to see you. Um, you've had quite a busy few months and stuff. You've retired, you've <coughs> set out on the road to, to new things. What's keeping you busy? How have you been? What's up? No, it's been good fun. Um, so nearly ended up in Japan in December. Okay. But it fell through last minute and that was sort of the right moment, I think, to say enough's enough. So nearly in Tokyo didn't happen and then come January, put out a nice little piece just saying that's me finished. Yeah. Moving on to different things, new challenges and just been dipping into a few different things. So media has been great fun. Yeah. Um, busy welcome welcome to the dark side. Yeah, good fun. Which, uh, which basically guys. translates as he's kicking back on the Samaj on the French re oh, relief fund. And what then is the Samaj? Well, they pay you a salary, for basically part of your salary for two years when you've played out there for two years. So you basically you can yeah. smoke a Cuba. He's a smart man. Pieces. Very nice. He's a smart I'm man. Just Very jealous, nice. basically. The time yeah. is right. Um, where are you living? Uh, so just outside Biritz, in between yeah. Biritz and Hossegor. So I Lovely. finished playing for Bayonne in the top 14, yeah. um, which is just in between those two towns. Um, so southwest France, lovely part <laughs> of the world, good fun. <laughs> Wife and kids are back there. <laughs> He's struggling. I'm really sorry we're having to work with these two clowns. <laughs> and yeah, mate, lovely place to finish, good part of the world. So yeah. everyone's still there, house is still there, and just trying to work our way back slowly, not good. too soon. Um, how do you... <laughs> It's, it's actually really time. tiresome working with you two. We're trying to have an intelli intelligent conversation. No, I'm just quite jealous he can cross his legs properly. I would say. Okay. Well, if you're a bigger gentleman and you've been playing rugby for quite a while, I don't know how you do that. Uh, I can't I've, do I've it. actually just got it. Oh, we didn't mean to disturb it. I oh, was no, fucking just trying to cross my legs. You back should mind your business. I'm just trying to get a bit of fucking look smart. Look at you um, all. Are you, are you missing mind. it at all? Shush. Are you missing it at all? No. You don't at all? Not at all. I think, it, or I, think I was maybe lucky at like, James maybe finished sooner than you'd anticipated for me. I'd reached the sort of natural cycle, ready really? to move on to different things. Don't worry, Hask could well pass this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but, no, but no, it's different for everybody. I feel really lucky to have gone to the length of time that I got to and was ready to finish in the yeah. end. So, and, and I appreciate everyone doesn't have that luxury. So now I feel really lucky to, to be doing different things. And do you feel all right? Like you're not carrying a knee that's falling off? And uh, but I think we're all fairly similar. There's bits that are never going to work the way they're meant to work. Yeah. Show them the shoulder. <laughs> Show him the shoulder. Just show. I said to him, how, I said, how, I, first of all, I said to him, you know, you retire, how are you? And he's actually, no, I'm not too bad. I said, well, your body's got a bit of a problem with shoulder. And I said, well, how does that, how does that affect you? Show him the shoulder mobility. <laughs> so this one goes there. Yeah. That one goes there. <laughs> oh, hey. Well, you literally don't, you yeah, cannot move your got nothing. Yeah. But that is bolted together now. Yeah. So, you know, there's bits of us that and don't people work. People get upset. People generally, get upset when you leave in, clubs. in good health. Yeah. In good health. Wow. There's a few bits that Wait, don't work. No yeah. shelf stacking. In good health. <laughs> You're alive. How do you. Yeah. It's terrible. How, like, insurance. <laughs> he'd, never, he'd never make a DJ like Hask. <laughs> no, that's the perfect hand for that. The perfect shoulder. <laughs> the claw. <laughs> Other hand in the air, mixing. Other hand pressing play. Yeah. Fade up, fade down. <laughs> Um, well, how do you look back on your career now? Because, I mean, you've, you've toured, you've travelled, you've, you've played at the highest level. Do you look back with a huge sense of pride? Is there an itch you haven't scratched? How do you look back? I think just been really lucky, to be honest. I mean, yeah. already touched it on the injury front, but there are loads of boys that get churned up and spat out by an academy age 21. Some people get cut short age 25 with an injury. Um, we were all pretty lucky. Like, yeah. you're 34, 34, you went pretty late as well. Don't know what age that was. Deep, man. Was deep. Did you get 36? 
Yeah. Oh, man. Like really lucky. So oh, I feel wow, really lovely. lucky. Um, we got to tour the world. Yeah. Lovely job. It was great fun. So lucky, basically. Uh, did you two play against each other? Yeah, loads. Yeah. Memories? <laughs> 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 Hass doesn't really remember much of his career. <laughs> no, 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 memories? No, no, well, no, he was Hass. Yeah. Very, very noisy. noisy? Was he noisy? No, very no. Chelsea. Good player, no. Not really. I remember we, again, rubbish draw. I think we all played yeah. together in a draw at Murrayfield. Yeah. yeah. That one, was it 28 28? No. 13. No. 13. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 13. Terrible. Christ, that was terrible. Um, no, we did play it, but. Because he, he's a nice guy, so you only remember the people who were that like. That would have been your first one, 07, was it? Was it 07? Yeah. Potentially. Yeah, no, yeah, I think um, I was the... Or was it 08 your first six? No, I was two sets, 2007, but I was at Wales, the last one oh. in 2007. Um, but we were talking about it before. I think we're kind of lucky that we're kind of last generation that actually got to celebrate or go and have a beer or... Yeah. Like now the international boys, like they fly in, play the game, fly straight back out. You don't even get to sit down, have a meal, have a beer or go out together. It's got that serious. So I think we were maybe the last part of the sort of noughties that got to play together and actually enjoy it, yeah. um, which was quite nice. Probably the best timing to have come through as well. Um, the games that stand out for you? It's a bit scattergun, but are um, there games and days which <laughs> you... Scottish, man. Yeah. Are the ones that we there won? There be many, other. <laughs> <laughs> You must have won one. Can we do this <laughs> after the weekend? Let's not do it before. Let's do it after the weekend. Oh, fuck it. It can't get worse than this weekend, yeah. can it? No, great away that we won. A great game in 2010 at Croke Park. Croke, I was going to say. Great fun. You scored that day, didn't you? Yep, scored a nice try. I mean, great night out afterwards. 2010 yeah. Six Nations actually was just great fun. So we ended up won that game in Ireland, ended up in a horse and cart with Rory Best coming home at five in the morning. Like, just great memories. Things you can look back at, you had great fun. Yeah. It was the same Six Nations that ended up... Again, when you could have a beer with the opposite man. And I imagine quite a lot of wine in France as well. Yeah, obviously. What's that been like in terms of, as a culture change, going from Scotland to France, and, and what are your memories of, seriously, I suppose, the touring it, and that kind of thing? It's seriously different, especially in the, the club scene. So, like back home in Scotland, you've got this tiny little bubble. You're trying to stretch and get the best out of what you have, because we're a small population. Like, I think there's more referees in England than there are players in Scotland. Like, yeah. I don't think people realise the context, what we're up against. Um, so everybody's trying their best. Then you get out to France, and it's just the Wild West. Like, uh, presidents are buying clubs just to get on TV. There's just nothing, no s &C, no medical, no care. Um, it's completely different. Um, and you're treated completely differently. Like, interesting. But, but if, some, you, if you think about it, the, it's different with itself. Hask's experience playing, obviously, at Stad in Paris, than playing down in the Basque. That must be a completely different culture at all, because, because you can pre pretty much wander around free in Paris, whereas in Basque country, you'd be the rugby mad. And well, well, that's it, and they're so proud. So to give you an idea, like I played for Montpellier, Cast and Bayonne. Cast has a population of 40,000 people. Oh, every week, there's 16,000 people in the stadium. Bayonne, there's 50,000 people. Every week, there's 16,000 people. So they're massively into the rugby, but just it's just so different. Like I saw Haas talking about the massage that you got in Paris, the sort of, you stick on your stretchy which, pants. Which, which massage was this, James? Yeah. Happy endings. Happy was endings. This, was this that was deep, allegedly. Was this Dieter Yeah. Actually, no. Was this the one where you were hoovered? <laughs> no, so yeah, so we were talking about the, the medical treatment in, in France. It's, you know, I used to end up coming back once a week on the Eurostar just to go and see uh, Kevin Lidlow, the physio in, um, I've, I've seen since I was 17, he's kind of a genius, because I'd go in and ask for treatment and you'd get, a, if you hadn't booked in, you get, they get the right arse, so you get like that, they'll be like, wait a minute, un minute, good friend. And they'll be like, <laughs> having a tab, and they'll be like, ah, nah, I'm not working. You'll be like, well, it's, it's free nah, on, the, on the break. They're like union, so it's like, you know, lunch break finishes, they've got to have their cigarette, boom, put that out. Came in, and I said, I got a bit of a dead leg. So he, he pulled out what looked like his nan's tights. And I said to him, listen, I know we're at Stade Francais here, and there's a few fruity bits going on, but I'm not, I'm not cross-dressing before training. But he said, no, put them on. So After? It's fine. After, yeah. right. <laughs> Obviously afterwards, we're professionals. Um, so I put the tights on, and then a the bloke got out what looked like a Henry Hoover, but it was, it was a bigger one. It was like a Henri Hoover, right? <laughs> <laughs> a, gr a grand Henri. <laughs> and, um, and he put it, and, and it'd be like that. And he would suck the... <laughs> <laughs> you know that? Well, i tell you what. Not the first time you've done that with a Henry Hoover, is it, Hans? Yeah, I, was five, I was in there five times a week, actually. <laughs> Dead leg was fucked while I was smiling. No, um, and he hoovered, he hoovered me with the tights. And the tights on the idea was to release the fascia. And then they did some other with a... The fascia. Yeah, the fascia. With some other drill thing that was, that was weird. It was just very machine-based operation. So you'd end up going... 
I don't really know what I've got, what value I've got out of this. Very clean though, very clean. Very no dust. clean. Lovely. So do you know what that machine does? No. <laughs> it relieves cellulite. And so Mamuka Gorgodzi, the big, yeah. you know, massive Georgian yeah, number, yeah. after every training session, would come in, strap it on, and <laughs> get it around his guts. Really? Every day. He loved it. <laughs> he was a hell of a player as he well. He still is, mate. Uh, he was like that the was you with it. Pursuit. Literally man yeah. manual throw you through a roof. Um, Smooth but that was, it was really different. And like, for instance, you had big Jim Hamilton was there. He, he lasted three months. Like, absolutely hated it. Well, and you Perhaps actually captain first training session. It's never going to really... Um, but just, well, just so why did he hate it, but you love it? So I, 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 we ended up with Fabian Galtier, so now the French yeah. coach. Yeah. He was the best attack coach I'd ever worked with. Um, really structured in the way he delivered. I enjoyed how he enabled you to understand what you had to do on the yeah. field. Um, hadn't had that level of coaching before, but he was a complete and utter prick. Right. <laughs> um, so just in terms of like an environment, culture, what you're trying to get out of people, which we're used to in Britain, there's none of it. So it's the rugby stuff to do that. But in terms of like emotional buy-in, yeah. standards, values, nothing. And so that's where Jim really struggled. Um, and you get treated That's all Jim had. No well, that, but that's it. So, like, so that's how Jimmy presents himself. That's what he does. He loves yeah. it. Heart on his sleeve. And so he lasted three months. He ended up halving his pay to go back to Saracens. Well, that's what Half I'm saying, well. isn't it? Half Allegedly, well. of course. <laughs> no, no, that's not... <laughs> No, that's not true. Oh, sorry, true. Sorry, sorry. I, I saw Maritoji on Monday. Well, asked him to borrow a cup of sugar and a wheelbarrow cash. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, wasn't it? Honestly. I honestly, genuinely, when I read all that report, I know you probably covered it last but I called up my agent and I was like, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> while I was playing, right? Price Waterhouse Cooper valued Marrow at 1.6 million quid, right? I've got to be worth 20 mil, all the spears and the shit I've done. I, I literally turned up to opening the envelope. I've hoard myself out for I the think entirety it's, I think of my career. I think it's quality of image rights, not quantity yeah, no, of image no, rights. No, bollocks to that. I called him up and they said, we should have sold Wasps a million quid, but it turns out they didn't have that either, so never mind. Um, Balls up. Right, the weekend Six Nations says sign. I think he's just cut, cut the numbers, cut straight <laughs> out again. No, but it's interesting uh, about, you just said about the, the culture out in France, because it, it, I said it before, you know, people talk about obviously going over there and the salary cap and stuff, but it, it's not, it's not for everybody. You Mate, there is no salary cap. No, no. But, when you, but what I mean is that it, the people say, oh, the, 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 the taking players from this country and about that, people going over there. But it's not, it's not what everyone thinks it is. You no. know, you, you, you sacrifice, you sacrifice the medical side, you sacrifice the comfort zone, you sacrifice the fact that at any moment anything can happen over there. I, m I remember I had three coaches in one year. And, and, the, and the, the, the second coach in that year walked in the first line-out session, albeit I'm not known for my line-out prowess, just within 30 seconds was standing there going, hey, hey, the, the roast beef, poisson rouge. And I was like, what? And he was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, to, I was like to Benjamin Case, I was like, is he fucking calling me a goldfish? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and he's like, ah, what's up? Like, mugging me off, laughing at me, you know, everything else. They, he, there was one particular coach blamed the loss of the, um, the quarter-final on, uh, against Toulouse, or Stanford State against Toulouse, on me, because in the week, when he, he'd, I'd been starting the whole season, didn't pick me, and I put one of the tackle pads on my back, pretending to be a ghost or a moon man, like, <laughs> down the side of the field, like I had a rocket pack on. He reckons that derailed the entire, <laughs> the entire thing, and he blamed it all on me, and he said it was embarrassment, and then, and then he screamed in my face that I was a son of a bitch, and if I was here next to you, he was going to rip my contract up. I lasted longer than him, <laughs> so. Um, but that's what I mean. You just. But then you see all these other players go from different countries, and they just can't last. You see a lot of the Welsh boys go over there. Mate, a lot of this, you know, yeah, yeah, they just they go over there, and oh, it's, Johnny Sexton. it's just madness. Jamie Roberts. You know, the owner coming in, and kick, kicking all the water bottles over, and saying you're all shit, and rip your contracts up. This is terrible. Or, yeah. or everywhere you go in these away games, seven-hour coach journeys. You yeah. turn up, and there's this sort of. I remember. Um, Gorgodzi and someone else and someone else just always be fighting, just horrific out and out brawls. <laughs> that I just and, the, and the, the French referees, it was like they'd never refereed before. It was like they just found because some of them had similar setups to you. Honestly, like, like, put, put dangerous, you in a, in very a dangerous. Very dangerous. Because then we have a federation referees, do they over there? Well, don't hear to. I think they've got five pro and the rest five are pro. Yeah. Well, mate, so, so Jim was the same. We ended up playing a game from Montpellier in Bayonne. So we had Fabian Galti and we had Mario Ledesma was the forwards coach. And so we were all like proud as punch to be over there. Games on Sky Sports at the time. Get over there. Jim's Close family's the watching. Yeah, good old days, glory <laughs> days. Jim's family's watching back home. He stuffed up two lineouts. 
camera pans to Mario Desma. Jim, we pay you to fucking jump, you dick, jump! <laughs> <laughs> and mate, that was him. <laughs> Two months later, he was back on that plane, back to South. He'd had, he had enough. Do you, but did Walsh you always said that it, the hardest thing that he had to do was to get professional at being unprofessional. <laughs> and he just literally, like, just you get used to not having anything. You have to solve your own problems and just be like, obviously, he had, he had the personality to sort of sit back and go, yeah, I'm fine with Yeah, yeah exactly. No training, whatever. Um, but yeah, he just said, you have to get used to being unprofessional. I, I went in to um, see the nutritionist once. <laughs> there, right. And How heavy. A, 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 she looked like she needed a good meal. <laughs> so I was like, I'm a bit sketchy taking advice. But, you know, like, look at Mike Tyson's coach. You know, you would never pick him out of the line and said he was the best coach of all time. Best Customarco. Box. Customarco. You look at him, he looks like your granddad. You wouldn't take advice. So don't judge a book by its cover. So I thought I'd give her a chance. So she pulls out his flip chart. She asks, asks me what I'm eating. I'm like this. Well, I prepared my food. And I even think I had a cool box with me with all my gear. And she went through and she basically, the upshot of about an hour and a half meeting was, I need to eat more of this stuff called fromage blanc, right? Which is like a white yogurty thing that they were trying to... Turns out she was sponsored by them. So even, <laughs> e e even she was on the take. But that was the upshot of it. I was eating too much food, apparently. I needed more of this fromage blanc that they would... So when I did get the fromage blanc, um, I walked past the prop David Atoub and he threw some sugar packets in my full, like, sealed packets in my, my yogurt. So I was like, what are you doing, David? I went to take them out. He just knocked my whole fist into the bowl of... of, of your... So I'm just standing there. The, the French was like the height of modern comedy. They thought, honestly, half of them couldn't train because they found it so funny. So I'm just walking there, covered in fucking fromage blanc that I didn't want. Yogurt all over my hand with all these French laughing at me. I was like, this is bollocks. But I wouldn't let them beat me, ever. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. How important is learning the language to being successful in France? Um... Yeah, 100%. I can remember my, my first few weeks over there. So I signed at the same time as Sean Tain Happy. Oh, yeah. We played yeah. with, um, again, lovely guy. Um, and the first game we played together with Francois Tranduc, who was our 10. So I was 8, Sean Tain was 12. Francois called a Chandel kick. And we were like, Sean Tain, he can't pronounce your name properly. This is really rude. <laughs> Transpired Chandel meant high ball. So Sean Tain and I stayed back, looked at each other like, that guy's rude, typically French. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was it. So the first week we were like, right, we're going to have to make an effort, learn technical stuff, but also just to integrate on a basic level, you have to speak. Um, so that's, I've been there eight years now and it was the, the most important thing in gaining their trust. Like it's tricky gaining their trust in the first instance of playing with them and then end up leading them and trying to lead them. Um, yeah, it's hugely important. I can honestly say I never gained their trust. <laughs> <laughs> you surprised me, I Monsieur there, Haskell. I was there, I'd go over the top with them, but there was no trust, you know, there was no trust. I would have gone off and they would have gone, yeah, lads, follow me, lads, lads. Yeah. <laughs> no, sadly, I, I didn't. Ollie Phillips, though, he was like, embedded himself in there, it's like a tick. He became more French well, than the French. That's, that's, that's Ollie Phillips. That is Ollie Phillips, yeah, I, yeah. My French was not great. I mean, pre-season, when they used to make you do three and a half hours post-training, when you'd be running, you know, and I basically spent the whole time manufacturing sandwiches and eating, doing these things. Three hours of French, I can't, couldn't deal 20 minutes. So I gave up after a couple of days, which is a <laughs> shame, really. I tell you what, though, it's coming good up top for France at the moment, isn't it? What has happened, we'll move on to the, the Guinness Six Nations. What happened on Sunday to the greatest team in rugby history? <laughs> well, that, that for starters. Fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> why? Well, uh, you said it, Eddie, not me. That's yeah. I, I was not involved in it. You this. said it all, earlier, though. Well, I it's, didn't. It's, it's, yeah, it's fine if you can back it up, but unfortunately they couldn't back it up. I mean, what, I, ha what happened on Sunday? Well, I, don't, I don't think it's as bad as what it's been made out to. I think... Tint, you, it was... It was another level. I mean, we haven't seen a performance like that from England for a long time. Right, just mistakes, are you talking? What are you doing? Well, just overall. Right, the fact that they had 65% of the ball, 65% of the territory, or the fact that they just did one-out runners. Well, the, the, the package. You, okay, you go back. So first try was a good try for France. Fair play in terms of... But Maro, first seven minutes, jumps out the line for no reason, leaves, leaves his prop hanging... Um, and then Ben Young's, well, Carl Sinclair gets it wrong defensively and, and then Ben Young's misses a tackle that he should never miss. But then Furbank drops that ball, he catches that ball, that's seven all. It's yeah. a basic two on one, it was definitely a try. So the problem is England never got any momentum, they only lost momentum. But if you actually look at the game in terms of where they played the game and how they, they actually dominated France, but they three snapshots, one Johnny May brain fart, and it's a different game. So it's, it was bad in terms of, if you look at it, need to pick an eight. 
need a new choice at nine. And you need... Why is everyone on Ben Young's case at the moment? I'm not on his case. I'm not saying you, but in general. He, like, there are be, a few be, who copped well, a bit of abuse. Everywhere else, we're looking to the future. We've got young men. Now, he says he wants leaders. Then how, Ben Young's has got 92 caps for England. What did he change in that first half? Did he try running with the ball because they were blitzing to maybe create space to be sniped? Did he didn't kick very well? He kicked too long. All their back three got he, you know, Furbank was under was getting pelters all the time. Everything was for a compete. They got free ball for the first three, get into the game. Um, so I just and then the problem is you've then got Willie Hines on the bench who came on and did a job. But where's the progression in terms of looking forward? Yeah. Is why he's getting pelters. No one could take away what Ben Jones has achieved. He's got 93 caps for his country. Um, you know, he's, he's been a, a stalwart for England. He's been a very good player. But is he as good as he was? I don't think he is right now in terms of those quick taps he used to be famous for, the snipes around the, ba- around the base. You just don't see that anymore. Yeah. And, and everyone talks about how he needs leaders. Then where, where is the leadership when the shit fan, whether Faz got a bag on the head or what, or, or he's having a bad game? Why is Ben not taking control of it completely? Is that rose tinted? And how much were you laughing as a Scotsman? Um, <laughs> I, I just think, I think France, again, living in France, so sort of reading French press and playing with French players, they, they've really battled the past five, six, seven years with players, coaching, st- like they've had nothing, they've been abysmal. I think Eddie has thrown them a bone with the narrative and the way that he's talking and he basically wrote their team talk. Um, and you know, with they, they didn't need any more motivation. He's going to get a team that was used to winning in terms of under twenties and, and everything else. So this is when he accused them of being young. Well, not accused them, but he, he identified they were young. Could they handle the pressure? And that they were no, England he, were trying he, to become the greatest. Exactly. Trans- 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 translate that means a, a little bit stronger than. He said they were going to absolutely batter them physically at home, which you speak in the French, you just don't. You know, they don't travel well. They don't play well away from home, but at home, they're a proud bunch. So you've got that factor, the emotional factor and the buy-in that they've had massively. French public's been on their back. They were wanting a change in the tide. Eddie's helped that process. Then Fabian Galtier, you know, he played or deployed the blitz defense with Montpellier even back in 2012. He absolutely loves it. He copied Sean Edwards' work from Wasps way back in the day. Absolutely loved him and loved Sean Edwards. They've then deployed that against England, caught them on the hop, and they've had no answer. You know, or like amazing player one Farrell, but he was caught man and ball every time by yeah. Blitz defence. They didn't get to the edge once. They couldn't do anything or produce any decent play. The one time they got the edge, they scored with Johnny May. So, but you have to give credit for the fact that they were massively up for it. Yeah, a Blitz defence that really shut everything down that England tried to produce. But then to touch on your point, they had no answer. Even at half time, there was no adaptation or lead or change in play. It was the same old, and they got absolutely battered. Why did Eddie do it? You know him, you've been in the team room when he challenges you as players, and when he goes out and then spins it in the media. Why did he come I, out I, with that I don't, ahead of the I team I actually room? don't know. I think, um, I, I, what for me was quite interesting is that I, I was lucky enough to go into camp on, on, on Monday. Um, I was cheating on House Rugby doing the O2 Inside Line Such Live. Tart. <laughs> Pain. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and all about keeping the, uh, the, the the wolves at bay. Yeah. Exactly, very much so. Wolf at the door. Um, and I, um, yes, I went in there. And, and do you know what? Look, I think if you're outside that environment, uh, you know, I watched the game like everybody else, and I thought from from my two penny worth, it looked like that England side, the very first game we played in 2017 or, or whenever it was, 2016, with a. Uh, with Eddie, you know, against Scotland when we played them away, where guys weren't coming onto the ball at pace, all the little bits and pieces that you put into place, players in motion, uh, aggressive bite in defence, just none of that was there. Yeah. Uh, so I think what, what's happened is obviously if you have success and you, you say things like that, people want to shut you down. People want to come after you. There's been big, you know, condemnation. I remember seeing some a uh, couple of comments um, pre me doing the O2 stuff um, saying, you know, when's Eddie going to apologise to long suffering England fans? I was like, what do you mean, long-suffering? You lost the World Cup final, and now you've lost against France. You've hardly fucking had a nightmare. You're not Scottish, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Easy. Yeah. It's too easy. Yeah. Yeah. You are playing a role this yeah. evening, yeah. my play. So, 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 so my point is, is that, look, it was disappointing, and I think that nobody knows it better than those guys in, in, in the room that they've got it wrong. And in credit to, to, to Sean Edwards, really, as well, because 
you know, he just, is, it just adds to the romance around because Sean he, Emerson, yeah, because he, he is a genius at what he does. I remember I, I, I texted him after the game, congratulating, you just wrote about belting me. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. right. Um, I got a translation, apparently, of Northern, that means great. Um, and, uh, you know, but I think what he did inspired them. And, and actually, you know, in the final against Africa, South Africa obviously had that blitz defence as well, just clo- closed England down. I just don't think we adapted. And I think it's always difficult when you've been away and coming back in to, to hit the ground running. But when you're playing against a blitz defence, you need to constantly be in momentum. You need to have those adjustments. And I think what's interesting, you talk about making decisions on the field. I'd love to see in rugby, they always talk about spicing things up. The technical, but let's get a technical area. Let's get Eddie Jones down by the side of the field. Let's get the opposition coaches in there and get them coaching on the side of the field. I think it would raise the spectacle. I think it'd be a great idea. That people is say a about great people idea. People say about changing, changing game plans. Right? You've got people mic'd up, so it's like Chinese whispers. So I remember I told you Sean Edwards at Wasp. They they told him he was on Channel Four, but all the rest of the people were on Channel Five because he was just <laughs> screaming. So he couldn't ever understand why the walkie-talkie wasn't working. Like, oh, let's fucking do this. Get it. Okay, get it. Okay, the ball. He would just go mad, Eola Rindley. Get, uh, and, and he was like, they turned, they turned the channel off so he couldn't hear him. But I think if you put him in a box, imagine you know, the technical area, you've got Eddie Jones in one box, you've got Fabian Gauti or Sean Edwards in the other, and you're delivering messages to the players. Could make rugby much more exciting and see a spectacle and actually see these people coaching. I yeah. think, you know, might change the game. Did you see the clip of Jose this week on, uh, after the... Um penalty was saved, Hugo Lloris saved the penalty and he celebrated and then someone reminded him that the guy who dived should have had a yellow card. You didn't see that? Went uh, viral. Did anyone, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 It was, it's just classic Jose on the touchline and it is, it's really sort of entertaining, it adds to the whole. I think that would be great, I've never heard that before, it's a really good idea. I, think, I don't understand why we don't have it rugby. Do you think Eddie would want to watch him on the touchline? Does he not like having a sort of... No, but, but I think you've got enough analysts and people mic'd up. I think if you, if you feel that you want to, to be able to change the, the plays in time, because one of the hardest things to do on the field is to change game plans. So what's very hard for fans to comprehend, and I've stood in enough crowds and enough rooms with fans to hear them going, why don't they just do this? You know, so much space over there. When you're a player, and you're blurring out your ass, you're tired, you know, you've got a game plan, and in all intents and purposes, you think you're making yards and things are going well, and it's not happening, it's very difficult to change on the spot. Potentially the only team in the world I've seen do that, the All Blacks, where they've gone, gone down a certain avenue, realised that's not right, stopped, regathered and gone again. It's very hard to do that because exactly what you said, you know, Ben Young's changing the way he played, some of the forwards needing to come onto the ball of momentum. You could, you know, you could get those messages on, but unless you sort of get it done, done collectively or have that ability to listen, maybe having a coach on a technical <coughs> area delivering those messages might change things up. I mean, they've got some, they sometimes have it in France, but the thing with yeah. in France, it's become a pantomime where they're all crying and stuff, like crying. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, honestly, like a Shakespeare uh, play. There's like drama, murder, intrigue, <laughs> incest, all going on in this one, this one box. And, you know, and they're all actors, aren't they? Like falling over. I think it might add another dimension. The world rugby was trying to fiddle <laughs> around with everything. Why don't they put technical areas and let the coaches go for it? Because I think Eddie Jones would be like Jose Marino, mugging the other coaches off, tripping people up. <laughs> I think it'd be great. I think it'd be brilliant. Um, what else do you want to say about England? Well, no, look, there is... When I say it's not that bad, they, I meant in the fact that they had a lot of ball. Obviously, there's still things to work on. There were no How big an issue is it if you take that World Cup final where they, they lost the front foot and they, their, their A game was unthreaded and they couldn't find a way out yeah. exactly the same I, thing I don't happened. think it was as bad as the World Cup. But the point is, is that if, if England are on the front foot and they've got their A game going, they're fine. But, but they cannot but find a way to, to win when, they, when their A game gets knocked off. understand that situation. In, sta- in Stade de France, you've conceded after seven minutes. You've gone down the other end, had the ball, and should have scored the other end. So bang, your momentum's gone, your heads have gone down. Your, your debutant, Furbank, <laughs> drops his head. Go back then, obviously... That kick goes up, whatever Johnny May was, I mean, there's not much that goes on in that head, but there clearly, <laughs> there clearly was fuck all going on at that time. And I love the fact that he still didn't even chase back, even when he knew it was wrong. He was like, you're going to blow up. And then he left the back row to chase back. So you give, you give him that try, and then every momentum swing, when England dropped a ball, it generally went in, in France's favour. So they didn't really get anything to go off. Yet they still managed to get in. The, I thought Ford put us in the right areas in the, sec, in the second half. But we didn't have... This is where you need a number eight. Why ask pl- a, a World Player of the Year nominee to move from his best position? Him and Sam under, Underhill have been a revelation in the World Cup. Why ask him to suddenly change and put a second row as back? Why not just 
But why, will you answer the question? Stop well, asking I, the question. Well, why, no. why is he not picked Don Brown? I, and is he well, moving no it fucking round? idea. <laughs> right. Good answer. Because he's, Thank cause you. he's stubborn. Because he doesn't like people who are, are getting. He wanted to g up Don Brown in terms of whether he doesn't look the right shape or whether he doesn't have the work rate or whatever. Um, but why not Ben Hill? Did, does, up did he ever, when you were in camp, before? talk to you as a group of players and say, "Oh, what do the media know, and why is everyone telling you yeah. to, to do yeah, this?" Yeah, I mean, I, and I, it, therefore, has he dropped anchor on this as a point of principle to his detriment? No, I, I think. Uh, look, I know it, it comes across, and I, I, you know, look, I can't always defend it because I, I don't know what's going on. And you, you know, I'm only observing from the outside and seeing what he did with us. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel that when they shout about players, he goes into the opposite direction. I think it's very hard for certain players that have come up in conversation that should have been in squads. There's more to it than just the player and just his ability. And, and sometimes that gets brushed under the carpet. I'm not saying that's the same with, 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 with Don Brandt. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that's um, a, a anything to do with it. I think with my, with my situation, when he called me up the week before the Scotland game, um, or the two weeks before we got into camp in 2016, he said, uh, listen, James, I want you to be in, in, in the squad. I'm going to play you number seven. I want you to hit people and I want you to carry hard. That's all I want you to do. Right? And put the phone down. So I knew already that I was going to be involved. And he said that I want you to be an important part of the squad. So, uh, you know, I first of all couldn't believe it was actually him. I thought someone was like pranking me. Um, but I, I then went into, into the, uh, that week and actually that was fine. And halfway through the week, when the press found out I was playing seven, everyone was like, oh, he's not a seven, doesn't look like a seven. Even though I played at Highland as a seven and, and, and at Stade Francais, um, people don't believe it because I'm too big or not, not skillful enough or whatever it was they were saying. Not all mobile above, enough. All above, not mobile enough. Doesn't remember very good lines. Yeah, yeah, all the things they said. Um, um, and, um, no, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> I'm happy with it. Um, seven caps, thanks. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to mention it, but... Um, <laughs> But so, you know, but I, I went in, what the media were writing stuff about it, and I said to Eddie, listen, do I need to spend more time working on my breakdown work? Like, you know, and we would do a lot of practice with it. A lot, like, I had George Smith in, I was working with George all the time. And he said, no, mate, he said, don't ignore what the press is saying, ignore what everyone else is saying. I want you to do a certain role for this, for this team. And the reason he's gone with Sam Underhill and, and um, Tom Curry in those positions, it's a bit like Pocock and Hooper. When Pocock's not a number eight, and they put Pocock to eight so they could play Hooper, Pocock, and Fardy in that back row so they could get the best out of them. You know, obviously the, there was one scrum where Tom, uh, I think, it, to be honest, it was a flanker's job to stop the ball. Yeah, um, was it. Or was it a couple of scrums? Yeah, yeah, yeah. scrums yeah. You know, where you, you need that. And the other scrum where he went from channel one <coughs> to channel two, which you're not allowed to do. Um, yeah, but everyone bends those rules. Yeah, yeah. Right? But, but I just think that, that the whole point was to get the best players on the part and create a balance. And someone like Courtney Laws has actually probably become one of the best ball carriers in world rugby, um, you know, as well as a destructive tackler. You've got Sam Underhill gets on the end of passes, who's a, become a good ball carrier. Tom Curry is bigger than you think he is, carries hard and, and is a destructive tackler and great over the ball. So I think he went for balance. And for me, I don't have any problem with that because I think we've got to get past stereotypes of what It's a problem when you go into camp on a Monday, brainwashed. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, sorry. I didn't speak about it. Sorry. 61 shows we've done, and that is the first piece of rugby analysis <laughs> we've had from Mr. James <laughs> 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 well, You know what? Hell, hell hath well and truly hey. frozen you over. It it's because you actually... It's because you actually... <laughs> It's actually because you asked me a question about rugby. That was it. You normally ignore it. I don't bother. Yeah. No, yeah. we had the waste of Eddie, time. Eddie for... had given him the answer. Yeah, exactly. Day, so. Say, no. say this to me, mate. No, but you know, because I, I, I actually got I, got I got called up in the week about it because everyone's kind of getting quite heads up. And I think you know, Don Brown, I think, is a great player. Obviously, you've got to have certain roles. And you know, there's no light for light replacement for Billy. But I think you know, it's about complementing different different players in the squad and getting the best out of it. If you can fit all those players into a pack, you know, a marrow. Um, you know, a cruiser, um, you know, or, or a, a Eel, a El, fucking El, Charlie Eels, and Courtney, and, and Tom Curry, and Sam Underhill. They're all very, very good at what they do, and I think they're the best players in those positions. However, you maybe need to bring in someone else, like you said, like Dom, to, to, to give a specific, specific role. I don't know. I want to ask you about Scotland in just a moment. What was the reaction in Le Monde and, and the French press to the win? Do they truly believe they're back and. <coughs> Vivre la Revolution, or is it? Yeah, 100%. It was quite nice, actually, the French press. So Fabien Galtier said, <clears throat> look, we're not going to do video. We just They took the night to just spend the nights with their friends and family. They had a big blowout at the team hotel in Paris. They didn't train on Monday. Uh, they then looked at the video together for the first time on, uh, on Monday night. So I think it's just been a long time coming for them. Massive tide change. They've been under massive pressure. They've been slated by French press for so long. 
So they're just delighted to get the monkey off their back, especially for them, Le Crunch. Yeah. Against England, they're delighted. So I'm happy for them. <laughs> After yeah, the third year in a row, that they almost looked like they were going to lose. I know. From, from having, a, uh, having a winning position. But you go back to Ben Young's, Dupont, for example, 23 years old. Why can't you pick a 23-year-old who can just naturally stand up and do that? Who? Who would you stick again? So go Dupont. through your nines well, in the prem. Who would you stick well, in? Obviously, you've got Dan Robson was back scoring on the weekend. You've got Ben Spencer, who's done it at every single level. He's done it at Premiership final, Heineken Cup. So his next progression is up there. Um, you've got Harry Randall. You're all right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We're, talk, we're talking One rugby. bit of analysis and it's time for a lie down. It's, we're done. We're cooked. Yeah. I was about to make a joke about Ben Spencer. <laughs> Mr. Withers? He's so Spencer exhausted. Doing it at every level. He's so I'm exhausted about. from talking rugby. He's like, I know. Like, I was actually trying to think of some scrum half, but then my mind wandered to um, DJing. I was like, oh, can you give a shit about then, that young scrum half? And then obviously, he's got, Alex, he's got Alex Mitchell in there at the moment as well. Something. Like, I don't mind having a, a, a so called experience member, but when you can see. Someone like Dupont doing what he's doing at 23. He's world class, though. Yeah, of course he is. But how do you know if. But if they're ri ripping up trees for their clubs, which uh, Don uh, Robson has done before, Spencer has done, how do you know if they're going to do it unless you give them an opportunity? And that's my issue is he has never looked beyond Wigglesworth, Kelly, Kelly Care, and Youngs. Youngs. I mean, Robson's had a Williams. run, and a few others have had a run. But, but then go back to Don Brown as well. Like I did. Commentary for him for his game against uh, Clermont three weeks ago. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I don't know, especially with the loss of Billy, I don't know why they don't just chuck him in. He, he, he's top class. Yeah. Watch and see. You need a little lie down, all right? Yeah. Just a little time out for James, everybody, because he needs a sugary, I'm just a sugary intently, drink and a chocolate bar. Speak for a while. I, uh, I tell you what, another issue I've got is that now all he talks about is power. Have you noticed that? No. And that we're down in power because Manu's injured. And I went through and they. Through all the Six Nations Championships that he's been in charge of, he's never had power. He's only had Manu for one Six Nations, 2019. Mako and, Mac and Billy? Well, yes, granted on that, but even in 2016, 2017, he didn't have those. Yeah. So he, he worked with Farrell, Ford, uh, Joseph. Joseph, May, Na uh, Brown. Noel and Brown. And we were scoring tries left, right, and centre. So to say that we can't create tries is bullshit. But do you not think that with power, with as much as I love power, it was a brick wall running into, which is I called it. Which your forte. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think um, the way Eddie coaches, obviously some of the people that he aspires to, you know, you know Jurgen Klopp and, and, and Pep Guardiola and all these, you know, and, and all these kind. Of, no, 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 the people. That he, no, 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 no. no, no, no okay, you're getting carried Eddie, away now. No, no, this is, no, no, you're, Eddie, no, you're showing off. He's got his hoot, he's got if his you let me finish, this is what he does. His Hoover. No. no, no. <laughs> But I'm saying the people that he has gone and worked with, <laughs> oh, really? you know, like oh, really? Sir Alex, but all these people that he's gone and seek, sought advice from, is what I'm saying. Not that it's part, you know, the people he's worked with. I find that what he's doing at the moment is he's putting his head above everybody else and saying these things and doing these things or whatever. Because actually, you know, it, it, he's taking a lot of responsibility himself and actually it's shielding some of the players. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, you know, if you're going to put, throw grenades out there and do whatever, you know, he, he's the first person after the World Cup came and said, I didn't prepare them well enough, yeah. I didn't prepare them well enough that week, I've got more work to do. I think he said something similar this, this week. I think, so people get very excited by this, but actually everyone's talking about his comments and rubbing it in his face. But I think when I went to camp, that doesn't filter in. None of that shit filters in. It's for fans and for media and for people to get very busy in their living rooms. It's not, no one actually gives a shit about it. And I yeah, think right. I quite like that for me because he, 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 he takes, the, takes the flack at the top Yes, it, it makes you rob for your own back, and I think those comments before a Six Nations were, were difficult, but actually I don't have a massive problem with that, because I think a lot of these world-class coaches, they're front and centre with the media dealing with things. You know, they don't align themselves with the players, they're well out in front, and I, I think with England, the stuff he says about power, I think he says half this shit just so you've got something to talk about. Genuinely, but I don't think... Do. Well, yeah, that's, no. that's fine when you win it. No, of it course. It really backfires on him when he's losing because he sounds like... A I, I was thinking this week, actually, yeah. if, it, if sport is entertainment, he is very good entertainment. That's what I mean. I just think... And he, he gets is, people watching and well, talking well, and it, it just marks, blows up every so often. You either love it or you hate it, don't you? So. I just think there's... I think I there's methods treasure. of madness. I don't think he just plucks his stuff out of his arse and just says it. I think that, you know, sometimes when you go, you go into those press conferences, you know, it, a lot of these, these old journalists just write the same shit over and over again. He just throws something out. We haven't got enough power. We haven't got this. We haven't got that. Or, you know, we're going to be the best team. We're not going to be the best team. Or, how have you prepared? 
led them, whatever the rhetoric is for that particular week, the team just get on and, d- and deliver. And, and I, you know, from, apparently, obviously, all the way the pl- guys played was a shock to them, it was a shock to everyone else, because they just had prepared so well, had pre- done everything they could possibly do, and were going to put in a performance and just didn't, just didn't deliver. And, but nothing went right. They didn't look like a side that had, had ever played together at all. But you're not telling me that you know, there's half the same team that played in the World Cup final. OK. We're going to talk Scotland in a moment or two. I think everyone needs a drink. You, as we said, need a little sugary treat for your very good first half. Cheer for Hask, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed his analysis. Um, right, I've got to do this. Please don't piss off until I've finished. You're listening to and watching a live version of House of Rugby. Good to have you all with us. Brought to you by Joe, together with our very good friends at Guinness. We are here at Flat Iron Square in London in the company of the former England captain and World Cup winner, Mike Tyndall. Television's James Haskell. And the legend that is the former Scotland scar, Johnny Beatty. Uh, and the lovely live audience as well. Uh, so let's keep you awake. Uh, we're a podcast and a YouTube show. We're available every Wednesday, although this week we're obviously available on a Thursday. Here's the former Bolton and West Ham midfielder, Kevin Nolan, who's been on this week's Liquid Football on the subject of showboating. Obviously, Cole, he, he would like not turn in on a day or whatever and just like he'd come in the next day and he'd be happy, smiley. We wouldn't see Ravel for five days, would we? And no one would know where he was or what, you know, and he, we, you know, we, we were like ringing him, turning his phone off. Then the next minute he's posting something on Instagram. So, you genuinely know, worried for him, yeah, by the way. <laughs> and, and, like, you know, there was a time at Christmas we were meeting at six o'clock and um, in the evening. So, obviously, the gaffer would give us off, I'd need to, so that we could, you know, spend time with the families. Yeah. He just hasn't turned up. So we're all on the bus for 45 minutes waiting for him, thinking he's going to turn up in a minute because we're going to an hotel. He just didn't turn up. Mm. But my God, what, what a magician with the ball and showboating. And he just he used to just tell you yeah. he was going to meg you before and then yeah. he'd run away with this stupid <laughs> laugh. <and laughs> doing that when he's done it. That was Kelly Cates and the Liquid Football Team. That podcast is out every Monday. You can either get it as a podcast or a YouTube show. Welcome back to Flat Iron Square and our live house of rugby. <laughs> Um, we are here in South East London, a little bit edgy, slightly out of my comfort zone, but very nice to be here nevertheless. I'm Alex Payne, we've got Tins, Hask and Johnny Beatty. Let's have a cheer for him. Uh, a room full of lovely people. And could we have our biggest cheer of the evening, please, as we welcome an absolute legend up onto stage, World Cup winner, all-round super dude, host of the Try Hard podcast, which if you haven't heard, you should have listened to. Ladies and gents, it's the one and only Nolly Waterman! Get your princess on there. Hello. How are you? What a, what a fabulous occasion. And I'm s- sandwiched between two <laughs> lovely <laughs> men. Use your words carefully. <laughs> lads, lads, lads. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry. We try very hard not to. Uh, actually, we don't ask majors in that. Um, how are you? What's been keeping you busy? <laughs> um, I'm very well. Yeah, I've been busy. I've been... Um, doing a bit of commentary, doing a bit of coaching, yeah. um, and enjoying the Six Nations. It's always, I think, a little bit strange when you finish playing, um, watching, um, and it's only been a couple of years for me, so yeah, yeah seeing the girls go out at the weekend, um, and I think on such an amazing occasion um, as playing France away for the English girls, um, yeah, there's a bit of a, oh, I wish I could still be out there, but I'm far too old for that now. 40,000 40, people. Amazing, great venue. Yeah. yeah, the French do women's rugby better than anyone. Is that fair? Yeah, no, they England do. England catching and up, but France are the standard bearers. Yeah, no, they they set the standard after the 2014 World Cup when we won. Sorry about that. Dong. Sorry. But on the back of that, they actually put in a. Is that the final you scored it? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I scored yeah. the yeah. final. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Were, these, were these the stats you wanted to say? Were they? Yeah. Yeah. I just say them. It's all right. Um, and. <laughs> Anyway, apart from coming home with a gold medal, the French did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the French did a, an amazing job of creating a legacy from the, their home World Cup. And yeah. although they came third, um, they played some great rugby and they actually really got behind the women's game. And, and it's taken six years to build the sponsorship, the TV coverage, um, but it's showing that if you do it properly, um, it can absolutely rock. And, and the game is at a place where it needs to be in terms of the support. Um, the girls won at the weekend, so all good. What coach are you doing? Um, I'm actually doing my level four at are the you? moment. Yeah, Ooh, that's which very is very prestigious. Is, yeah, it's actually the highest Invitation qualification um, of Have the Have you got RFU. ambitions to coach? Um, or are you just so sort of collecting it as, a, as part of the journey? Yeah, I'm just what, to add to a brownies badge? <laughs> 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 Don't get jealous! 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 Don't um, <laughs> 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 Co- 
coaching wise though um i worked for the majority um of my career as an international and i went down education so i taught then i worked at hartbury college and ran a rugby program there and that's kind of where i started um I actually coached the Italian men's fire service sevens team at, in wow. the summer. Wow, oh, And How'd we you get won. That gig? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, it Jose, was. Jose, Jose, <laughs> <well. laughs> I tell you what. When <laughs> tell them they all need to train with their shirts off. No, I don't understand why. <laughs> the Italian Spanish same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sh shirts off more like they did it in yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Slightly yeah. different. Yeah. So yeah. we were over in China at the World Fire and the Police. Games, which is the third biggest, genuinely the third biggest event in the world. So you've got Olympics, Commonwealth, and then this event. It's over 76 countries. It's absolutely epic. I didn't have a clue what was going on. I was in China, in Chengdu. I was supposed to be there is as a wag. Is that what you told them when they caught you in the change room? <laughs> 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 I don't know how I got here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Here, oh, here. sorry. Yeah. Um, but actually, on that, one of the things I did say. <laughs> one of the things I did say. Was that one of the players? Then? <laughs> <laughs> on that, so, yeah. You'll follow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Uh, Slow uh, readers group. Oh, <laughs> rugby fans after all. Anyway, we. <laughs> I did make ice baths compulsory, and they genuinely stripped down to basically just their pants and strutted over. And I was like, I'll make sure they're in the water, make sure they're enjoying, like, well, not enjoying enjoy themselves. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a bit strange having all of the boys stripped down to their pants. And I mean, it was it was a right coaching gig. You, so. you can have it. And we went. You bit can strange that you made them do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your first rule of coaching? Do you want to talk about the morning, the game plan? Must shower in pants yeah. at all times. Can I just say... She was, I, she I, was, I was studying PVC and leather at the time. <laughs> Although, like I think wet. this shows the difference in terms of... <laughs> You just talked about mauling, and I'm coaching sevens. Right. Like, there's yeah. no chance. Right. He gets a bit confused when thing? it comes yeah, to rugby. That, that, <laughs> that, that, they, used rugby. Rugby. they used to do that when Hass played sevens. Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It says here to ask you about how good this Red Roses team is, but to be honest, I'm just more interested in your tour tale. So <laughs> where else are we going with that? Can Quick, did, can I ask oh, one thing to interrupt yeah. you? Actually, it was the last six days of the last World Cup, all the stuff the girls did around... Um, the stupid questions they get asked. I think, uh, was it you? Were you, were you doing no, it was Mo and Mo yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought it was just all that stuff. Oh, was brilliant. One of the questions was, are you all lesbians? Yeah. Which they handled extremely well. Yeah. From a Mr. J Haskell, Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, right, so I, this is actual, genuine fact. If, uh, so, people, <laughs> people honestly That wasn't ask, really me, I'm not so, that. <laughs> thing they'll ask is about sexuality so are you all lesbians no um it doesn't it isn't a thing a even if we <laughs> <laughs> no. slide into those dms yeah. um and um, then the other thing that people are obsessed with is does it hurt your boobs like genuinely and um, i can think everyone's going yeah does, does, <laughs> does it oh, no God. it doesn't it doesn't you wear sports bras for that um, and I don't I, know. I always it's, think of. Have you got you an know, example of one? I, I, I think of. <laughs> oh, judging by some of the props I've Judging hell. by some of the props I've played with, they could do with a sports bra. <laughs> <laughs> what, exactly. Go on. Wow. Well, Peter he, Bracken. He, he left. Oh, no, there's, there's one more. He left, he left, went back to Ireland. Oh my goodness. Looked like a, a burst bean bag. <laughs> <laughs> he needed a full body bra, honestly. <laughs> Did he have stinky breath? No. 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 Um, that was it Kieran Bracken? Uh, not <laughs> Kieran Bracken, <laughs> Peter Bracken. Funny thing you used to say about sports bras, so 24, 2017 World Cup. Go on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, great friend of mine, Rocky Clark, um, I've known since 15, like I was 15, so we were the youngest girls going into the senior academy, so we've known her for a long, long time. And we've kind of gone through highs and lows for our career. Anyway, I'd managed to work uh, my magic and get um, someone to support support um, <laughs> wait, um, to supply some sports bras unbelievable brands and they provided them so I hung them up in the panache bras were unbelievable and so I got them for the girls sent over anyway put them in the changing rooms and said look don't wear them that we've got them they literally were brought over for the game so it's like don't wear them for this game if you're not comfortable absolutely fine Anyway, Rocky Clark, known her for years, um, she stood in front of me and we're just about to go out in, like, live on TV in front of thousands of people. It's kind of, the women's rugby is massive. And Rocky turns around, she went, oh, you know, thanks, mate. And I was like, you know, you're a great friend. And I was like, oh, you know, touch your moment. She went, my tits haven't been up here for years. <laughs> and I was like, oh, just... <laughs> 
Just let it go. Let it sail. <laughs> let it sail. <laughs> Very good. Anyway. What I love about this is Hask has given up on his media career a long time ago. Tins doesn't really care. Johnny's here thinking, yeah, I might get into media. Now he's thinking, how the yeah, fuck I, do I get off stage without noticing? <laughs> hashtag me too. We're all it's fine. Exactly. Um, from Gossard to the weekend, hell of a win. Nice for the girls to show the boys how to do it. Emily Scarrett, sensational. Wonder try. Is it Grand Slam Class formality sensation, now? Sensational offload. Yes. Yeah, Amber Reed. Yes. Yeah, was the... And then... Okay. Coming from a 12 to a 12. Half. Yeah, it was a good offload. That. Um, how yeah. good a win was that for England? Um, really good. They beat the French four times last year, but it wasn't a French side that you would expect. <laughs> they underperformed. They, they picked three of their sevens players straight into the starting lineup in the autumn, um, one of them being at 10 with Drew Ange. She's a, a wonderful rugby player, um, but clearly hadn't played a lot of 15s and, and created a lot of problems for them in terms of their continuity in the autumn and England, England won. Um, Why well, was that? She only played for seven minutes and then stopped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, ironically, Break. her passing was really shit, and, and like, which so is strange. <laughs> um, but, yeah, she just didn't run the game. Um, and then I think in terms of the Six Nations to go over, it's the first time England have won over there um, since 2012 in a Six Nations match, and they do do rugby properly over there. They support it. Um, but the, that game at the moment that will really build um, a camaraderie, a strength and a unity behind for that England side ready for the World Cup next year. Yeah. Um, so the win was, was brilliant. And actually, I think what did win them the game wasn't necessarily the moment of um, Amber Reid and her off road to, to Skaz and the line and, and the fastest I've ever seen Skaz run, mm -hmm. but, but actually their goal line defence. And yeah. that's something that we always used to pride ourselves in for years and years. And that's something that is a... A mindset it's not necessarily a technical thing it's just get on your line and do not let anyone cross it and they showed that and I think that that's a wonderful statement for England to make unfortunately that game was the first game of the Six Nations because we follow the, the same pattern as the yeah. men which I believe needs to change um, but now they didn't last year change up the team why would you change it well, well, why would you have a World Cup final before the pool stages? Yeah, so like, it's, it's, it's basically, why game. wouldn't you run it the same way we do? It goes on world rankings. So the Six Nations works on world, world rankings. Okay. So the top ranking teams will play each other at the end. Okay. So why would you not do that? Because then, as you say, you should technically get the best two teams playing at the end, hopefully, for the Grand Slam. The Grand Slam. There's some real it's challenges around that. the women's game at the moment, um, and I think that scheduling is one of the biggest things, and there's a massive um, couple of articles about um, the fact that the women don't get prize money um, for the championship, and in my opinion, that's the least of the worries, actually. The most important thing is scheduling. Um, <coughs> get the game out there, get the exposure, get the opportunity for people to go to the games. On Sunday, every single one, so each of the three games kicked off at exactly the same time. Now, if you're a fan of women's rugby and you want to watch those games, it's impossible. You, can't have, you can have two screens, but to have three is crazy. Um, so there are things that I think need to change to help progress the game. Um, and also the format in terms of having England-France at the start isn't helping. Um, but at the same time, it's an opportunity now for England to change up not a wholesale changes, because I don't believe in those, but just start to drip feed in other players to get that opportunity and exposure in an international shirt, because those are the ones that might have to step up in the occasions yeah. if people Je get injured. Jess was saying last week, though, that Italy could be quite tough at the end. Are they doing all They're right? just really they? random, the way they play their rugby. Um, like, genuinely. <laughs> How good will it be in New Zealand? Um, I think it's... I'm I think glad you're not just giving it the stock. Yeah, it's going to be great. No, Why I don't, is it not think, going to be? Um, I think what's really important is the New Zealand public get behind it. It's a long way for people to travel. Um, when you host things in Europe, obviously it's not as far. And so actually you get travelling support for all of the games. And that's what we felt in, in France and in Ireland. It was a wonderful atmosphere of all sorts, of a real eclectic mix of fans from all around the world, but predominantly from Europe. And I just really want... New Zealand, and I believe they will, but it's a nation that is saturated with rugby and rugby success. So can they really not just get behind their girls, but get behind everyone in that tournament sure. so that the media, because now I work in it, <laughs> if they're 
If the images coming back from New Zealand are of empty stadiums or half-empty stadiums, it doesn't sell the game. And that's really important to do, irrelevant of the rugby that's being played. So I really hope that they do support it. I re they're doing a, a, they've just launched the, the logo. I saw that. Um, which I've just had pointed out looks something a bit dodgy. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I hope it is a success because the game is at a point where it needs it. Interesting. We will watch with great interest. It's going to be an amazing rest of the Six Nations for sure. Well done on all stuff. <laughs> um, right, are you ready for some, You're still with us? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, good. Well done. <laughs> uh, who is ready for some fun and games, says producer Sai. Over the last two live shows, we've actually played a couple of games. We had the FaceTime Challenge, which went quite well. We're going to do that again. You were the winner of that. Um, uh, and we did mean tweets as well. We have got a lot of potential mean tweets. <laughs> a lot of potential mean tweets. But we're going to settle for don't, a quiz instead. Don't I, don't Although I have we have mean, got... Don't I have a mean tweet? I haven't read this yet either, by the way. So I wasn't allowed to read it. We get regular mean tweets. Tins, you I have got one. So it's basically... Oh, excuse me, what's a mean tweet? Where someone someone what a mean just, tweet is. Oh, so, a mean someone, tweet. I thought yeah. you said me, M-E, tweet. No. That's Hask. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is from Andy Fairbanks. I love your range of merchandise, but would it be possible to get a handheld rechargeable car hoover in the shape of Tyndall's snout? <laughs> right. I'm seeing dollar signs. <laughs> in all fairness, so am I. <laughs> Uh, the Trade, Lord. Trade, would, you, Trade, would yours, would yours be the upgrade? Because it's a bigger version. It is very, <laughs> yeah. very, very, very true. You are welcome. I've got, I, you I've are got welcome the, any time. I've got the handheld. He's got it the full, full uh, floor uh, hover. <laughs> I've got a twin turbo. <laughs> <laughs> Henri, back with Henri. Right, we're going to have a quiz. Uh, Hask is always giving it the big one about how intelligent he is. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading. That's why I read, because I don't know what Anyway, Hask is very intelligent. Uh, Tins has got good insider knowledge, so we're going to put them both to the test. We need a timekeeper. Money. Oh. It is money, ladies and gentlemen. Money. money. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> money. Right, what are you doing? You're doing time and score. Yes. Murray is doing time and score. We've got three one minute rounds. We're doing a special subject, general knowledge, and then we're going to do each other's careers. <laughs> uh, we're going to partner up the World Cup winners and the non World Cup winners. <laughs> The winner, get, more fun, then? the winner gets the glory, the loser has to sing a song of the other team's choosing, and if Hask and Johnny lose, you've got to sing it in French. Tell Round one is Actually, specialist God. subjects. Oh, Hask, yeah. listen. Sorry. Round one is specialist subjects, and your specialist you subject, you, 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 you're going to have to do well to contribute here. Uh, we've got Harry Potter and Sherlock Holmes, a melange of questions. Really? Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. Are you ready, Murray? OK, don't shout out, but let's just, see how I just, we get on. Yeah, um, Question number one. Gryffindor's ghost is nearly headless Nick, but what is his full name? Uh, Nick... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to hurry you. I don't know. Sir Nicholas de Mimsey Porpington. Right. What, what subject? One of your relatives, is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's definitely... Flam <laughs> yeah. It's wasting time. Probably your, it's wasting time. Probably your best man, wasn't he? Uh, what subject did Moriarty teach? Uh, maths. Uh, mathematics. You got this wrong a year ago. Have you learned your lesson? New students need to, need to learn the secrets of the castle. How many staircases does Hogwarts have? 15. No, 142. <laughs> How did Sir Grimsby Roylet, good old Uncle Grimsby, die? Um, bit by a snake. Good. What was the name of Hagrid's dog? Uh, Fluffy. No, Fang. Fang. Mary oh. Morstan, who later marries Dr. Watson, appears first in which book? Uh, a Tale in Scarlet. Four. Sign of the four. Yeah. Where does Vernon Dursley work and what does the company produce? Oh, Vernon Dursley. Um, yeah. Not sure. Give him another 30 seconds because he's shit. Grunnings, <laughs> Grunnings is a drill manufacturer. You can have two more. In the adventure of the blue carbuncle, what was the car where was the carbuncle found? Um, There's a carbuncle. Mm, no. In the throat of a goose. We're going to. Johnny, thank you for all your contributions <laughs> so far. <laughs> um, I thought it was just you. What mate. symbol is on the Hufflepuff crest? Badger. 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 You can have one more. How does Sherlock de greet Dr. Watson at the very first meeting? Um, dreadful. <laughs> Wanked him off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are correct. It's well done. <laughs> Do you know what? It's um, so close to you. I feel... Right. I, I think you've got, you got, you got, you got, so got half to win. You've got half to win. 
Uh, Tins and Nolly, your chosen subject is the TV show Friends. Oh. Are you, what? Can we steal? Can yeah, we steal? No, no, I don't know. What? Can we steal? No. no. You just sit here quietly. Look good. One minute, says Sai. Uh, right, question number one. Are you ready? Question number one. Where were. Where were. Where, 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 where. You can all fuck off. Two, one. Where were Watson and Rachel supposed to pay. Oh, so <laughs> You can all fuck off again. <laughs> Three, two, one. Where were Watson and Rachel supposed to go on their honeymoon? What? Where were Watson and Rachel supposed <laughs> to go on their honeymoon? Uh, it's Caribbean. No, uh, Athens. Uh, what, Athens. Which of the boys dates Janice first? Chandler! What, what TV show did Joey and Chandler love to watch? Baywatch. Baywatch. Uh, what is Ross's son's name? But it's not interactive. On. It's not interactive. What, it's not interactive. what is the Potter? name of the building superintendent where they all live? Uh, fucking do. I oh, know. Uh, I don't know. The, Triga. Uh, yeah. the Triga. 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 Which of Phoebe's songs becomes a music video? Smell it, yeah. What's Joey's favourite food? Pizza. Uh, Pizza. Sandwiches. What and plastic sandwich. surgery did Rachel have when she was growing up? What? Oh, what job? No. Uh, Joey has an imaginary friend. What was his name? Uh, Maurice. Maurice. Maurice the Space Maurice. Cowboy. Maurice. Space Someone Cowboy. Here. Someone, Maurice. listen to the man go. What colour is the famous uh, sofa in Central Park? Time. Purple. 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 I'm going to oh, no. say <laughs> eight to two. Yeah. Three. Eight to three. Yeah. Eight to three. Yeah. Generous. <laughs> Who gives a Thank show? you for tuning into House of Fwagby. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. I did that deliberately. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah. Whatever. Right, general knowledge, <laughs> brain box. What are we on? Uh, oh, here we yeah, go. General knowledge. I tell you what, mastermind was never this fun, was it? You know? Yeah. Uh, right, you ready? Haskin Johnny. If you... I'm, I'm Fweddy. Are you... <laughs> general knowledge section, Haskin Johnny. Question number one, are you ready? I'm not entirely sure how I fix that. Who won the Super Bowl on Sunday? Chiefs. 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 After the president, after the game, President Trump. Congratulated Kansas City on winning, saying they've done the great state of Kansas proud. Kansas City isn't in Kansas. Which state is it in? Shh. Missouri. Bath. Missouri. <laughs> which movie won Best Picture at the BAFTAs on Sunday night? Uh, 1917. Very good. The coronavirus started in which Chinese city? Wuhan. Wuhan. Wuhan clan. Wuhan. Wuhan clan. What virus? Wuhan. Which film actor is known as the Moussels from Brussels? Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Van Damme. Very good. Hey. Your, wife, your wife Instagrammed her favourite five podcasts today. What number was House of Rugby? Number two. No, it wasn't even in the top five. What number was it? <laughs> shush, Murray, shush. Uh, what was, what's Lawrence's middle names? Bruno. Uh, Nero. <laughs> Very strong. Uh, name one of the two South African try scorers in the World Cup final. Uh, uh, Holwyn, Chesley, uh, yeah. Cheslin, and. Um, you can have two more. Fast can you run the stop? In which New Zealand city was Gats born? Waikato. Waikato. Uh, and in which sport can you win the Davis Cup? Tennis. Cool. Very. That was quite good. What are we giving them? Uh, are you making that up? Eight. 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 Yeah, eleven. Well, yeah. Eleven. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Right. Are you two ready? Tins and Dolly? Yes. Oh, yeah. How many points did the late great Kobe Bryant famously scored in his last ever game for the Lakers? 16. You're correct. Uh, what is the state capital of California? It's San Fran. <laughs> San Fran. Is it really? Sacramento. Apparently Sacramento, Actually, but I didn't I'm, know that. I knocked my front teeth out in Sacramento. That's a story for another time. Uh, name two stars from the BAFTA nominated film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Brad Pitt. Yep. And uh, Leonardo. Uh, what was the name of the bar where we did our live shows in Tokyo? Peter. Oh, I went there. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. We had dinner. I genuinely arrived. They didn't, they Peter didn't introduce Peter O'Connell. Peter O'Connell. Uh, which artist Peter painted the screen? Uh, Come on, it's hanging in the East Wing, isn't it? Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Um, Ed Edward Monk. Who will take over from Olivia Coleman as Queen Elizabeth in the final season of The Crown? I've never seen it. Uh, Imelda Staunton. Two time. more for fun. In 2006, your wife Zoe won gold at the Eventing World Championships, but in which city? Aachen. Very good. And what is Elliot, what's Elliot Daly's middle name? 
Do you know that? And it's daily. Should be a centre. Philip. <laughs> nice. That would be like triple barreled. I mean, Fitzgerald apparently. Right. Fitzgerald. Where are we at? What, what's the score now? Why? I love Murray. Murray panics when he gets put under. He's getting a complete flap. Make them up. So they got, they got George Doors. So it's level pegging. It's level pegging. Um, this is dramatic. How convenient. <laughs> we have, how, how, con how convenient. <laughs> We've got a showdown, so we're going to the final round. Can we dim the lights? Who would have thought smoke? it would be a level pegging? You, you simply couldn't give a shit at this point, could you? <laughs> Can you just, for, the, for, for effect, just I'm pretend. waiting for you to okay. get on with it. Uh, we're going to talk about each other's rugby careers. Thank you. James and Johnny. What are you? Oh, come on, you ready? No. What is Mike's middle name? James. Correct. Oh. <laughs> Which Boom. town? Good, good stat. Which town was he born in? Otley. How many caps did he win for England? 70 some. Seven, oh, no. 75? Wait. Very good. Yeah, yeah. How many points did he score for England? Fuck all. <laughs> <They're not laughs> uh, 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 50? I am in the top 54. 10 try scorers. 74. 74, 74 is correct. Did he play more games for Bath or Gloucester? Gloucester, Gloucester. obviously. Hey. He made his England debut against which team? Wales. Wales? <laughs> Ireland. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. In 2011 at the World Cup, Mike got into some trouble for throwing people at a bar. What was the bar called? You weren't there. Um, you were there. High tossing Dwarfington. <laughs> altitude. Chucky McFerrin. How many altitude. altitude? How many Six Nations tries did Tin score? Fuck, I wouldn't even have a clue. Eight. What was his last England game? <laughs> Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. Very Scotland. good. I think that's full marks. That's nine out of nine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good one. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Happy now, aren't you? Happy now, aren't you? Happy now, aren't you? Right, you ready? Yeah. What is James's middle name? Walter. You, you've, you've been fucking reading these questions. Start again. <laughs> Do you all know the answers? <laughs> right, right, yes, correct. Walter. Where was he born? Walter. Uh, Win what, one, uh, of your home, one of your home towns. In Windsor, is it? Very good. How many caps did he win for England? My 77. Name's How many points did he score for England? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, one. <laughs> uh, I, th uh, I think it's 40. 20. Uh, did he play more games for the Highlanders or the Rico Black Rams? It's got to be Highlanders. Very good. He made his England debut against who? <laughs> Wales. I actually knew it was Wales. He got into some trouble from ripping off Joe Marler's squam cap. Who else, apart from Joe, squirted him with water? Danny, Danny Kerr. Kerr. <laughs> Not the first time he was squirted, is it? Hasn't <laughs> How many Six Nations games did James score? Sure he isn't. Sorry? How many tries did he score in the Six Nations? Well, three. Four by Matt. Three. What was his last England game? No, he ran in the post pad. He would have had four, but he asked him to What true. was his last game? Ireland. Uh, Ireland. How, many did he, how many World Cup games did he play in his career? No. Seven. <laughs> uh, seven. Uh, five. Yeah, I was just. How many did he five. win? <laughs> <laughs> No, time. So go on, Murray. It would have won four. The, the, the yeah, least... My middle name's not Walter for the fiftieth time. <laughs> <laughs> it says here it is, so we've given them the point. No, you Yay. can't. It's not. It's not. What's your middle name? Dennis. Wiki, no, Wiki, it doesn't matter what's on the sheet. The, the Wikipedia is <laughs> something completely different. <laughs> the, what is your middle name? Andrew. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's Walter. Just, it, it's anyone who's what? read Wikipedia is Walter. <laughs> they got. Oh, you. So the final scores are Murray. The final scores. Are Loudly, so everyone can hear. Okay. He's flapping Murray's again, he's flapping, he's getting frightfully Murray's nervous. <laughs> Murray's gone from panic. Shoreditch to Happy Day with the Fonz's jacket on. <laughs> it's actually Biggles, he's coming to buy play. <laughs> Sock right. Camel. Uh, Murray, who won? Tins and Nolly got 17, but Johnny and James got not 18. <laughs> <laughs> got, got 19, 18, so Could how many you 19, 18? Well done, that was the least inspired cheer of all time. Well done, Johnny and Hask. What did, oh, so that means you've got to sing a song. <laughs> Shit what are they, they going to say? No. Oh, never come at the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what did you just say? <laughs> never come. <laughs> Sometimes what? you go on the nose, in, round the nose. <laughs> uh, your choice, your, your weapon of choice. I'm really bad at singing. I'm oh, really no, bad, bad at singing. Oh, no, gonna, they're going to sing us out at the end. Okay, you can sing us out at the end. Uh, okay, we'll sing you us can sing us out at the end. end. Yeah. Um, and then we'll maybe join in or maybe not. I'm really bad. Right, we're now. Tell me something. No, no, we're going now. We're going now. <laughs> we'll do that at the end. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to do that. What a shower of shite this week's show. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be worse. I know it really is. It really is. I mean, he's given me a script. We're still not kidding any sort of coherence. It's good to know we've talked about Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. Yeah, okay. We're going to do that now because we're going to move on to the Guinness Pint Predictor, ladies and gentlemen. What? Shush. Everyone shush. 
We're going to do the Guinness Point Predictor. For those of you who don't know, the Guinness Point Predictor does pretty much what it says on the tin. You predict the winner and the margin of the Guinness Six Nations games every week. And if you're within three points, you win a pint of Guinness. Great. If you're within seven, you give a pint to a mate. And if you don't, you don't. Uh, it's, that's not in there. It's a very simple concept, unless your name is Jess Breach, who really struggled with it last yes, week. Yeah, really we did. had a couple of problems there. So, well, since last wing. week, you went England by... Uh, I think you I said... You went England 28-18 by, by 10. Uh, 10. So that no, I didn't, 26, 18, we're actually, eight. We have got a House of Rugby League, which you can enter by entering HOR once you've downloaded the app. Hask forgot to enter his this week. Are you going <laughs> to make an effort this time After around? even on the WhatsApp group saying, yeah, yeah. he's done it. Well, those, is anyone here in our House of Rugby League? Yeah. Right. They oh, need to get on going to join our House of Rugby League. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. And also you need to dry, join the Tryhards League. You yeah. also need to join the tri Yeah. So we've got good prizes. Uh, right, this is unraveling <laughs> really fast. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have some predictions and we can give commentary as we go. So let's start with the Calcutta Cup first of all. Who, what is the margin of victory going to be to who and why, Johnny? Um, <laughs> man, it's a toughie. Um, Scotland were amazing last week and were absolutely dreadful. I don't think they can be as bad as they were. But I think in Edinburgh, tips the balance. Um, I'm looking for Scotland by three. <laughs> Have you messaged Hoggy this week? Dotted down, lad. Yeah. I messaged Hoggy uh, and say, and I generally said to him, if, we, if Scotland lose this game, it's your fucking fault. <laughs> and in all fairness, he texts me straight after the game. He goes, what's, what's wrong with me? But I put my fucking hands on my feet on my hands. And he was, he was like, I'm devastated. But he got over it. I we think. still love Hoggy there, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Bounce back this week. Um, interesting. Score by three. So it's Scotland England this week is in it? the Calcutta Cup. <laughs> is it? It's a traditional fixture you... in the Six Nations. Right. Who's going to win uh, by how many and why? France by five. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think uh, England by ten. Is that, is that literally just shooting in the dark, or is that because you've been in camp and actually people have said we, we're going to get better? I just think that we, two years ago we went there and got absolutely schooled by Scotland, got beaten up, um, in the, especially around the breakdown. Uh, I think that. We were, didn't get out of the blocks at all against France, so I expect some form of fireworks either side. I think Scotland will want to see the opportunity, but I just think England have got some ability to score tries. Nolster. Uh, England by nine, and I'm going to go on the fact that there'll be a lot of points kicked rather than scored. I think Scotland actually played probably some of their best rugby ball in hand for like 90%, and they couldn't manage the last bit to get over the line. Um, yeah. But actually... Like James said, if England are going to learn from what they've, they've gone through the last couple of years, and actually, I think the loss in France is going to... We oh, might not necessarily see great attack, but we'll see points on the board. Happy days. The Lord. Um, I actually know it's going to be really good weather. The reason why I know it's going to be good weather is because, uh, on a serious point, uh, there is a Wounded Lions... 500. Yes. So um, for Doddy Weir and for Tom Smith, uh, Rob Wainwright and a few of Rob well, Wainwright. There we are. <laughs> Fucking disease. <laughs> uh, and a few of his mates. They are cycling 500 miles in two days. So it's non-stop from Twickenham to Murrayfield. Um, they want anyone who can, who's maybe on the way. Probably not in this room, but uh, unless you're doing Twickenham for like five miles and then you turn around. But uh, anyone who wants to join in, and you can. You can find their website and donate, but that's going to be epic the, all through the night, and they will turn up. Can on we have a day. cheer for Doddy, for Tom, and for the Lions yeah. Legends? Yeah. Yeah. So the reason, go get them. The reason why I bring that up, I'm, ha I'm having dinner with I'm having dinner with Rob Wainwright on Saturday. I'm not entirely sure he's going to want to fucking talk about anything. He'll be yeah. miserable. But uh, he said that the, they've checked the weather and the weather's good all the way up. So I think it's going to be quite a high-scoring game. But I still think it's going to be tight. I think both teams are going to start scoring tries. But I think England are going to edge it by four. Two. Scored it by three. Um, t what, what is the mood in the Scotland camp coming to this one? Eddie's got into them and said they're niggly. Sam Johnson's come out and said everyone hates the English. I've never heard that before. Um, Scotland quite... I love it how a Australian comes out and says everyone. Like, he's in his tartan, was he, when he said it? Possibly. Fucking from, from Brisbane, isn't he? Good. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. 
What? So, it's just like my, uh, Billy Vinopola is from yeah. Basingstoke or whatever he's from. Newport. Newport. <laughs> Go on. What, what's, where, where are Scotland at? Off the back of that game in Ireland. Mate, they'll have a huge confidence boost. Um, I love gonna... that. Only a Scottish person can say a huge confidence boost off a loss. Yeah. <laughs> it was only five points. But the manner of what happened at the World Cup yeah. was, you know, yeah, it was, was a little bit of a humbling. We were not performing well. We got smashed. Ireland and Japan. Um, we notoriously haven't played well away from home. We haven't started games. We actually started well. We came out with a bang. We were more pragmatic and actually got on the front foot. We played through Ireland. We got round Ireland. We just could not convert when we got to the final third. Um, so if we can keep those positives, yeah. hold ball and convert the chances when we get into the 22 against England, there's no reason why we can't beat them. Um, again, there's masses in terms of resource. Like Gregor's effectively got about 35 blokes he can choose from. That's it. 34 now, because one's exactly one to, more. Uh, not yeah. there, but <laughs> you think about the what job he does. What is happening there? Is that going to sort itself out soon? Or I don't think so. linger? You don't? No, I, I don't think so. I think. Uh, How can Scottish England. rugby not get that sorted? Because I don't think it's their choice. Um, I think Finn's obviously made his choice. Um, they've set standards and a culture and something they want people to buy into. He's not quite ready to buy into it and go into 100%. So. You know, the, the ship sailed, you've got Adam that's come in. Adam Hastings has been amazing for Glasgow in the Champions Cup. Confident young guy, took his chance. He was phenomenal in Ireland. So unless Finn comes back and tries to build bridges, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, he was out in Dubai last week with mates, trying to get away from it all. Um, and you ultimately, as a Scottish fan and supporter, you just want the best for the Scottish team. Yeah. We don't have that many people. We want our best team on the field at all times. Um, and he's a world-class talent, so you want him to be involved. So I hope he comes back. I don't know when or if it's going to happen, but you know, for Scottish rugby and for, for positivity going forward, he has to be involved because he's top class. Actually, from a neutral's perspective, come back, Finn. Um, for me, the nines, Price and Horn, massive, were awesome in terms of just lifting line speed, taking away Ireland's defence because of how fast they got the ball out there at the base of the scrum. I think you know, with modern rugby now, the quicker you can play the ball, the less, because defences are so aggressive, that if you can stop them when they're going backwards, then, then that, and that's why they got easy gain lines, easy carries, and then it gave it Adam Hastings a, a bit of a... And those two boys from Glasgow, for about two or three years now, have been amazing. Yeah, so the boost, especially little George one, when he comes on at the end of the game and it's yeah. breaking up, he is lethal, so massive. It's not often... Out. I'll shout out the props, but their front row were outstanding. Took, they took it to Tag and, uh, and to uh, Kian Healy. Well, especially Mark. given the context. So, again, not many people know about Rory Sutherland, our loose head, but he's come back from a complete groin reconstruction, like blew everything to bits, and not many people come back from that. So the fact that he's come back from that, he's not had much game time, a few games under his belt, and then straight into Six Nations rugby. I mean... He had furlong in trouble, and, and that is, you know, kudos to him, the job that he's done, getting fit, getting back, and then performing with Xander Fagus, another young tight head on that side, he was phenomenal as well. Yeah. Um, and they were great, so fingers crossed it can keep rolling and build into this week. It's, it's going to be a proper, proper ding dong. You, you'd see, would you see the difference? You said high scoring, what, what's going to win it or lose it? Um, as boring as it is, I think, um, in terms of territory and the kicking and actually how one England's back three do that um, and deal with it, but also the nines. Do you think they go to the same back three? What do you think? What do, they will do what? Do you have inside? Well, okay. if Watson's fit, why would you not pick He's him? Not. He's not. He's fit. been called out. Oh, so. Um, breaking news, think, right. breaking news on House of Rugby. <laughs> right. I, I personally by the way, I got told yesterday by someone who was in the squad he was fit for selection, but there you go. Um, Did his calf. I, just saying. So it's Smoking not a just throwaway selection. I personally would go with the same back three because that's the type of players that you want that are, that are electric ball in hand that will challenge a defence and will and will bring the ball uh, bring the game to life. I think as boring as it is, I think that the nines are going to have a massive influence in terms of their kicking. Um, I actually would prefer to have a far more exciting nine on the bench to bring. Brings, I don't think Willie Hines changed the game and needed to, um, but that's the squad that they've gone with. And I, I think that that's the area um, that, in that type of game against Scotland, you need to, the, the finishers, as Eddie Jones calls them, needs to be finishers. They need to change something. They need to add dynamic. They need to 
They need to challenge the defence, and I don't think in the nine yeah. in particular, um, Willie Hines coming on for Ben Youngs is something that can influence that. Whereas you see in the Ireland game, John Cooney coming on, he was absolutely spot on with his kick kicking. Um, well, <coughs> Let it go. Potentially, Let it go. but actually, I think that that's something that I think the finishes. I think if Stuart Hogg is on on his game, he is a wonderful fullback, and he is. Oof. It was said with love, wasn't it? Yeah, he is. He is but he is. He's From so fu he's brilliant to watch. He's a great guy, um, but actually wonderful to watch. And it was, I mean, it was a bit of an error dropping the ball. Okay. <laughs> um, um, so. Murrayfield, love it or hate it? Quickly. I always found it a very difficult place to come and play. I found that pissing um, rain, lights I, off. I just, I just found sometimes I played, you know, played there for, for Stad a couple of times, uh, and you know, it was kind of empty. And then played the international rugby. It was quite quiet. Uh, I felt it, w it wasn't, it, it never created that great an atmosphere, I didn't find. But then when Scotland were ahead, it was a place where you went and watched England Grand Slams get ruined. You know, you, England dreams shattered. And to, two years ago when we went there and we got beaten up, breakdown got dismantled, couldn't get into the game. I've never been at a stadium like it where, you know, every, every Scot was, was there singing and, and it was a real hostile environment. So I think hopefully, um, I like playing in a hostile environment. I think it can be, can be a great thing to get you know, both, out of both sides, you know, get the energy out of both sides. But I've never found it my, my favourite. I always found my worst stadium was Aviva to go to because you always, always lost, always very hostile. Scotland, I found, found could be sort of medium. But as I said, two years ago, it was mega. And I think they can make it very difficult for England. I think it will be. Ireland, Wales, the winner will be by how many and why? Uh, Wales by <laughs> five. Wales by five. <laughs> by six and a half. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Why? Um, I did. I was. I got a lot of pelters from Welsh supporters because I, I said it wasn't that great. But then Italy were terrible. But Wales put in a really good sh uh, shift in the first half. They scored some great tries, but then I just think they probably the opponent dragged them down. And because if you take the last five minutes away, it would have been 28-0. But Italy were bad, so I, I expect Wales to build on that. And I was really disappointed with Ireland. I just d didn't really think. You surprised me. Too. <laughs> well, <laughs> surprised me. No, because I said last week that I was really looking forward to it with. Faz and, and Catty coming in, I thought they'd have a little different approach off strikes and stuff like that, but it was still... I mean, Johnny, Se Johnny Sexton <laughs> scored off his old runaround, didn't he? So he was happy, but the rest of it wasn't really imaginative. So, okay. And they got stuck in one-out runners again. and um, Yeah, it was a bit like England's performance, but they managed to get a win, um, which, from their point of view, they'll be great. They've got Wales at home, but I think, I think Wales showed more, and I think they'll... They, have that mentality when they go win. I thought they unearthed some, some diamonds and Tompkins. Um, I mean, it, so I would, it was Italy. I would, have, it's a I, would have, I would have started him from the start. I, I would would you start him this week? Yeah. Yeah. Against and I would push 100%. North back out to the wing and take the fella off who got that head knocked. Yet, it? Who was that? Yet, it? Johnny that hasn't come no, out no, no, yet. No. No. Yeah. Interesting. Have you made up your mind? Um, I'm. In agreement, actually, I think Wales, but the just talking, the selection hasn't come out yet, and I think George North and Tompkins is probably a, a sway to Ireland or a sway to Wales. I think in terms of what Wales have got to offer, um, we didn't really see it against Ireland, uh, against Italy. Um, so, yeah, I think they massively miss Liam Williams. Um, I think he's a class player in the outside backs. Um, and Lee Halfpenny is safe, I think, in terms of dealing played, with the high actually, ball. He played, I had one of his better games in the last yeah. few years. Um, and dealing with the high ball and the aerial contest went Wales's way. And I think that that takes out a massive threat from Ireland. Um, so I would go... I will go Wales if they don't potentially pick George North at 13. Okay. I think Wales, I think um, where Dan Bigger's playing at the moment, I think he's taken some of the, the, the attacking uh, kind of prowess he's taken from Northampton to get to, I think, the second in the table at the moment, the Premiership. Obviously, it's Carlos Spencer Europe. in it last week. Yeah, you know, through the legs, um, <laughs> which was pretty incredible. I think he, he seems to be bossing things. I think he, you know, he, he, he's... We were talking about Wales having a good, uh, good defence always under Sean Edwards, but not necessarily attacking the way that they wanted to. But I thought they showed some better signs of that, and I, I would back Wales probably by, you know, by five. Who's refereeing the game? Don't know. Because it could make Does a massive, could make a massive difference. 
Okay. It's that French guy. Didn't have a French fucking clue, did he? Right. Okay. To be honest, Barnes maybe I should become a referee. If you don't need uh, to know anything about Barnes rugby, I'll just become a referee. It'd be perfect. <laughs> Would you to run me? Actually, that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Segway. Run on his arms. Go around on a segway as a referee. <laughs> That'd be amazing. How good would that be, imagine. whizzing around? I reckon this would be a like DJ a ball, mall cop. Mm. I reckon would you give them a little cap as well? Yes. <laughs> a visor, 100%. That would be nice. Johnny, bring us back round. Wide awake. We, we are picking <laughs> Ireland Wales. I was he, gonna... can't, he cannot do more than 30 seconds. <laughs> He's fantastic. Yeah. And I was going to say as well, I don't think Ireland are going to be as bad as they were. Okay, um, Omani starts again, I think. But I, yeah, yeah I, 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 <laughs> that I really I, opens it up. Um, not a sheep, but, but following, I, I almost see Wales again, but closer. So two or three <coughs> points, go for a three point swing. Um, but I thought Ireland were blunt, unimaginative, almost turgid when they had the ball. So I. <laughs> Brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I honestly, I, they won't be as bad as they were, but I didn't think they looked. They're not the same team as they have been under Joe Schmidt for right. me anyway. Uh, completely mm. different. So I'm looking at a way win for, for Wales. By? By three. Wales by three. Five. Wales by five. Can you remember what you said? No. Six. Yeah. Wales by six. <laughs> and Wales oh. by five. Well, I know wow. I said five, so I'll go ten. I'll go eight, actually. I'm going to go All eight right. in the middle. Um, and finally, France by how many against Italy? <laughs> a Don't, lot. No need to justify. A lot. Forty? <laughs> Uh, 50? On, on my match pack predictor, I've already put 44. Have you? Yeah. D plus 30, yeah, 35. Okay. Italy going to win, them. France won't be able to be consistent. This is a double or quick talk. Yeah. Oh, oh, so I'm so excited, I'm dribbling. Just imagine if they did. Jeez. That's what I mean. I, I don't think they will because it was John and I were talking <laughs> off, off air that basically the... Um, you know, having a bit of an Anglo-Saxon mentality in the French side, I genuinely believe they can have structure and have something like Sean Edwards. They could be the best team in the world because individually to the man, I think they're, they're probably the best rubber players in the world. So yeah. I've seen, but the consistency in getting them emotionally correct, hopefully that, that influence will happen. If it doesn't this week, then Italy will win by, by five. <laughs> Such a pick. Yes? Um, I think France by 31. Ooh, nice. I just said 45. Good. 44. If I'm uh, right, by the way, yeah. you can never mug me up on rugby ever again. <laughs> well, well, until the next time. Yeah. If we can. Well, you will have to call me the Lord or the Hero or whatever it will be. I'll make you call no, me something. That might be happening. Um, well done. I think that sort of brings us to the end, doesn't it? It's a stuttering over the finish. It's a sort of Derek Redmond of shows this, where we're just being carried to the finish line. Another, another, one person wanted so it. It's another train. Derek Wedman. You got cross to me about missing your train last week. You can't blame me this time around. Well, no, I've got 15 minutes to get to right. Paddington. Someone get the chauffeur ready for tins. Uh, ladies and gents, thank you very much indeed. Give yourselves a cheer and a round of applause. Um, don't forget to get onto the Match Pint app. If you're not on there, do come and play. Join the House of Rugby League or the Tri Hars League. Uh, you can also win free Guinness, you can gift free Guinness, etc. etc. Um, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to House of Rugby on Joe, whoa. together with our friends at Guinness. And thank you to our fantastic audience right. here at Flatiron Square in South East London. Whoa, Give us a whoa, whoa. Yeah. Song. Sing. Song. Sing. Oh, song. song. Wait. No, wait. Uh, sing us out. They're like the credits before, at the end of the show. Before we sing out, don't forget Wounded 500. Wounded Lions 500. Uh, don't forget to la download some of Joe's other programming that you may have missed, including Liquid Football with Kelly Gates and TK and Carl Frampton. Thanks to James. Yeah. Thank you to Mike. Thank you to Johnny. Round of applause to Johnny, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Round of applause for Nolly, ladies and gentlemen, the superstar. Thank you to you beautiful people as the audience. We're going to see you next week. And the duo <laughs> are now going to sing us out. Do you know what she just said? I said, do you know any words to any song? She went, Mamba number five. <laughs> so one, two, two three, four, four, five. Everybody, everybody in the, the house, so come on, let's ride, ride to the Lake of Young 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 very good, ladies and gents. Yeah, about the week is for going over here. Molly Tins, Hass, and Johnny, thank you very much indeed. We'll see you for a beer at the back of the bar. Thank you for coming. Have a safe journey home when the time comes. God bless and good night. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.